And welcome back, everyone's favorite segment, Patience with KV. The man in the middle is KV himself. KV, welcome to the show. Uh, let's get right into it, John. We have FOMC minutes just breaking here in the last couple of minutes. Anything of note? Well, just to kind of rattle off a few of them here, um, almost all participants at the Fed's uh, March 19th to 20th meeting judged it would be appropriate to pivot to less restrictive policy stance at some point this year. Rates are going lower unless they go higher. Uh, participants generally uh, judged risks to achieving employment and inflation goals were moving into a better stance. Um, participants generally noted recent data had not increased confidence that inflation was moving sustainably down to 2%. Actually, it's still going higher. Uh, some, some, some kind of questions about geopolitical things uh, causing supply restrictions. Mm, uh, generally noted uncertainty about persistence of high inflation. Uh, just to kind of rifle through a few of them here. Mm -hmm. Um, a vast majority of participants judged it would be prudent to begin slowing pace of balance sheet runoff fairly soon. Um, just a whole bunch of stuff that they've probably already said before, and none of them know what's going to happen. Yep, sounds about right. KV, your thoughts on a very interesting FOMC minutes. <laughs> well, well it's, it's it's important to note that um, the minutes that we got today, guys, right, it's from the Fed meeting that we had about two weeks ago, right? So it does right. not take into consideration the CPI data that we got this morning, okay? So it could have been much different if, if we also had these CPI numbers. But I think we all expect the CPI to be hot this morning looking at how we had PPI come in last month. So mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the uh, um, sentiment was to the downside. Anyways, back on on the Fed. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit on the banks side, what the investment banks are talking and what they're also taking into consideration for their for their investments. Uh, two of the two major banks who, who uh, I kind of read upon uh, Barclays is now expecting only one rate cut in 2024. OK, so that's their expectation for the year. You got to also understand, guys, that these investment banks, they are an advisor to a lot of big institutional hedge funds, mutual funds, family offices, right? So they have a lot of, I would say, advisory uh, importance to a, a big chunk of the market. Um, and then the big one, gold, right? Yeah, a lot of sway. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we used to do all, all day back when I was, you know, on, on equity sales. So um, the big one, Goldman Sachs expects two rate cuts. They moved the, the expectation from June to July for the first one. And now they're expecting rate cuts to be quarterly. So it's going to be in July. And then they expect the next one to be sometime in November. Okay. So that just goes to show, guys, that all of these banks and everyone was expecting um, six rate cuts. And then it was yes. down to four. And then they went down to three. And then now it's two, like it's one to two right now. Okay. So just because even the market is understanding that there's a lot of uncertainty you're not seeing any huge swings on the market like we're just i think the chart my chart is up yeah so my chart is up there it's been complete sideways today right and we didn't see much follow through after the thursday drop as well if you remember last week guys on thursday when we had those comments from one of the feds that we're going to get two rate cuts this year crazy yep. drop we, we, yep. we took advantage of that in our trading room hopefully you guys did as well but crazy drop what happened got bought up on Friday as well, right? So no follow through just because the market, I don't think that's where the focus is right now. And we just saw it happen right now as well. Nothing happened. Like this is a very tiny movement for FOMC minutes, okay? So my opinion, I've been talking about this with my uh, traders as well. I don't think the focus is on the Fed right now because of all this uncertainty going. I think the main focus right now is on earning season. We mm. start earning season on Friday with the financial banks. I think JPM and Wells Fargo start the um, season off on Friday and then we go on to the other ones the next few weeks. But I feel like everyone's waiting for that at this point because that's where we're actually seeing if, if or, or, you know, what, what's happening with the companies actually. So uh, because, you know, CPI data, it's lagging. This is inflation for last month. It's not even for this month. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit lagging. Um, I think it's, it's all about earnings season right now just because of this price action. That's 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 just my opinion, but um, let's see let's see how the next Fed meeting goes. 
Yeah, Friday we do have J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, and Citigroup all due out before the open. Um, on Monday, on on Monday it's Charles Schwab, Guarantee Bank shares. We, you know, we always start with the financials with with regard to earnings. Tuesday, um, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, PC, PNC Financial, Bank of New York Mellon, Northern Trust. So yes, the uh, earnings season really starts on Friday. Again, with uh, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, and Citigroup all announcing their earnings. And uh, I, I, I do love earnings. Season, earnings yeah, season you do. Usually, yep. Usually, it's 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 our, at least on my end, it's my best time of the year, yeah. just because there's more uh, uh, follow through on the moves. Right, we have bigger moves. It's it's a little bit easier to catch, you know, um, those quick movements in the market you don't need to wait hours and hours for a proper move to happen mm-hmm. um and the mornings are usually more volatile i love to trade the mornings so the mornings are a little bit more volatile um hopefully we we get away of, of the price action we've seen at least today today was just awful mm. i'm not sure i'm not sure how you guys have been doing but um luckily i stayed out in the morning session because if i had gotten in i'll probably just been gotten stopped left and right on that first um half an hour to one hour on nasdaq um it's crazy it's just crazy <laughs> yes it certainly was not the easiest of trades this morning uh you know kv i want to touch on something you said cpi is uh you know you know backwards looking right uh it was a month ago but uh ppi though is ppi would be forward looking then i believe you said something similar to that. Looking. so yes. is that's and that comes out tomorrow so is that something you might pay a little bit more close attention to as opposed to the 100%. cpi that's got you 100 yeah, ppi Why, as well as P- explain PC, that please yeah, yeah so um PC as well, like PC is kind of shifting to the economic indicator that the Fed is closely watching right now. It used mm-hmm. to be unemployment rate and CPI, but now I think this PCE is, is the main focus. But also PPI is a forward-looking indicator, right? Because CPI, it's consumer inflation. You know, what you as a consumer is buying on shopping malls, groceries, whatever. PPI is from the production side. So it's actually what the companies are being affected. So that hasn't still passed down to us. Like we right. still haven't felt that, that inflation yet. So that's why it's a little bit more forward looking. Um, and that's why at least my expectation for today was for the CPI to come in hot, just because we had PPI last month come in um, hotter than expected. Again, nothing is gonna be always this way, like 100%. If this happens, that happens because it's not as black and white, but mm. expectation, that was the expectation. So. Tomorrow, if we also get the hot PPI tomorrow, we might get even a, a bigger move on, on the market because today was just very, very aggressive um, on the drop. Just crazy. And uh, keep in mind as well, guys, because you have that aggressive drop on the pre-market session, volatility pretty hot today. Um, I have this risk table, which I use a lot, which shows me you know the volatility at any point in time. Usually, uh, it's an eight-point risk on NASDAQ. We had it at 22 points in the morning and we have it at 18 points right here. So it's, it's, it's triple the, the, the volatility. What does, does that show you is yeah. be careful on the movements because the candles might look small because you don't have anything to compare it to unless you look at five day uh, period, mm-hmm. but uh, um, they're not small. These are big swings and if you should get in on, on these swings with a full position size. You're going to get stopped before the trade actually happens. And that's almost guaranteed because of the increased volatility. You feel like you could hold the pullback. You see the chart, you're like, okay, this is a nice pullback. You look at the PL, it says that your account is deactivated for the day. So yeah, right. uh, um, size down, please size down. If you have 100K, 150K combine, size down. If you have a 50K combine on your express, I'd rather you switch to micros on days like this because it, it's just wild and you can make up for for the gains with micros because the moves are there to support it you can make as much as you can with micros as well on days like this it's not like oh my god i'm going to be you know making you know less profits you can make as much as as, as you need to make it's um it is uh something that I, we i talked about this morning on the opening call when there is volatility you know the you got to size down. Um, yep. The moves are going to go too far. They're not going to go far enough. The vo- you know volatility just increases how far the market can go. That's a great 
great suggestion, KV, to, to size down when volatility does strike. And I completely agree with you. This PPI number tomorrow is going to be really important. If that comes in hot again, that, that takes us to another at least two months, maybe even three yeah. months of, of continued increasing inflation. Hmm. I think you're right there, lost. John. Uh, I, think, I think the Fed's in a bit of a pickle right now. Like uh, KB was saying, huh. we came into 2024. You know, six six rate cuts now, and as David Green was saying in the previous session uh, segment, uh, now we're you know barely a two, uh, pushing it out to July September. So the Fed is in a bit of pickle. So we will pay very close attention to PPI tomorrow, and then on top of that, we do have this geopolitical risk coming from the Middle East. You know, KV, you know, how do you stay how do you stay on your toes? How do you stay nimble, knowing that uh, at any moment's notice a headline can come out and completely throw a good trade idea, completely throw it off because of, a, of an unexpected headline. You know, how do you trade mm -hmm. something like that? Just uh, um, being in um, less size than usual. Um, yes. Like yesterday, like I, I was still uh, flying back to New York on Monday, so I took zero trades on Monday, but uh, we took an amazing play yesterday in the morning. And in, in terms of profits, it was equal, maybe a little bit more than my usual profits in a full size, even though I was half sized in the position. So that just goes to show that even if you decrease your size by half or even more, you're still making up for those uh, movements just because of the increased volatility. So why would I uh, be in a position full sized and then not let the, the trade breathe? Because if you are in full size on this type of, of price action, you cannot let the trade breathe. You're going to get stopped out in a candle or two. And the next thing you know, the trade is going in your direction. And now you're messed up in the head because you're like, oh my God, but I had the trade right and I got stopped out. Right. And now what happens mm -hmm. is you end up facing. Now you're entering late because you got stopped mm. on the first try. Now you enter late as the trade is moving. You enter late. As soon as you enter a uh, candle afterward, you get stopped again because it does the pullback that it's su right. suspected to do. So it, it's very, very key to size down to let the trade breathe because if not, you're just going to have that domino effect and you're just going to get stopped out left and right. So at least that's what I do. Um, I always, always am looking at um, the volatility. And again, if I can't uh, um, manage it, either decreasing size or even switching to micros, if needed be, depending on the um, account size. That's the only way you can do this. The only way, in my opinion. Um, size down. I see, lot, I see a lot of people asking there about the risk indicator. Um, yes. The risk indicator, I think we, we've given it um, another time, a couple of times actually on Top Step TV, but it basically just shows us guys um, the volatility um, at any point in time in any futures. As I said, risk right down on, on uh, NASDAQ is showing me 18 points. Maybe I can make the chart a little bit better. Let me just okay. uh, make it like, give me one second. A uh, real quick update. Uh, we got oil trading uh, up at... Uh, Couple of pennies, oh, about sixteen cents off its highs. High of eighty six dollars thirty one cents. We're currently trading eighty six dollars fifteen cents. Just see a big spike out of that Middle East headline. Uh, we'll be scanning the headlines and passing them along as we see. Mm -hmm. Like if you were saying, got to dumb down the size a little bit. Uh, big based yes. on that, it's called headline risk, right? The headline risk is unpredictable. You have no idea what's about to come out. So sizing down yeah. is the play. Yep. yep. So uh, I made this table a little bit bigger for everyone on the. Um, chat to see but basically what this shows me is okay if i open a position right now on nasdaq the risk is a little bit over 18 points so that just tells me okay if i put us if i open a position right now and my stop loss is less than 18 points that trade more than likely will get stopped before the uh, uh play even works out and i just have it translated in, in in ticks and dollar because i always ask myself as well okay right now it's showing me 371 dollars in risk Am mm -hmm. I comfortable right now that if this trade does not work out, losing $370 per contract on my full size? If not, there's two things we do. Either we size mm -hmm. down to be able to hold that type of loss, or I just don't get in. It's simple. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not comfortable with high volatility, you just don't get in. And as I said, roughly we get an, around an 18, uh, an eight point risk, eight point risk on the NASDAQ. And as you can see right now, it's more than, um, you know, Double that. Yeah, yep. a little bit over the, over the double. So no. I use this a lot, a lot, a lot, actually, just to understand what the volatility is. If I replay this back in the morning, you can see it being um, 
23 points. 23 points in the morning. So for people that are like are putting, you know, 10 point stop losses, five point stop losses, it's never going to work. Because you're you're not adapting to the volatility. So how can you put the same stop losses you did, you know, uh, on, on a slow market day? It's Well, that's you your it. indicator, right? Yep, and we we've shared it. It's it's completely free. We've gonna we've given it out a couple of times here on Top Step TV. I think cool. the link that we shared with. Let me just actually find that so I can just get yeah, pass that along. We'll share it with the chat. We'll pin it to the top here. Uh, yes, you have shared it with us, and people are asking how can they get their hands on this. Oh, well, you look at the man um, that created it. So we will pass it along. Kimmy, can I ask you? Does uh, does when you're looking at that, I know that you're trying to get below, you know, eight points of risk on any trade that you're taking. If the risk is greater, similar to the way it is now, and maybe even this morning, do you take kind of trade location in into into effect with that? I mean, if you're near a swing high, near a swing low, will you take a trade even though you're looking at bigger risk? Be out from from technical levels. Yes, so it will come um, just like anything else is a double confirmation, right? So if the chart is telling me that um, a stop loss might be even lower than this or different, obviously we're going to adjust to the chart as well. Uh, okay. So yes, you, I use it in conjunction with the you know either support levels or, or volume profile, whatever you guys are using to find those key areas. Use it in conjunction with those. Um, Excellent. So yep. Uh, question is, does it work with Top Step X? Um, there's no uh, custom indicators yet on Top Step X. I think that's planned. So hopefully yes, it's, it is. Um, it's back. So the link is, I'll just put it on the chat as well, but it's futureswithkv.com mm -hmm. slash Top Step TV. And um, it's completely free, guys. It's not a trial. It's completely free. Great stuff. Thank you for that. Kevin. Very nice. Very nice. Always oh, very generous with his time, very generous with his indicators, and we will pass that mm -hmm. along. Go give him a follow. Uh, hey, John, I've been looking at the, uh, as, as of you, the ladder and the S&Ps. It's been very, very thin. I yes. can't for the life of me figure out why. I mean, we're, we're double digits up. It's starting to look more and more uh, not quite like well, the Dow or the NASDAQ, but it's getting pretty thin. I mean, we're 20 a bid, 20 on the offer here. What do we do with this, man? I, I mean, we got to trade it, right? So how do we trade it? We just do ones and twos? How are we going to? Definitely. What happened to the two hundred lots? Definitely trade smaller. <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna stay this way until we get through any reaction and market moves after the PPI tomorrow. Then I think maybe we'll see we'll see some of the blood come in. But I mean, we're at we're at VIX over sixteen. Okay. Um, you know, KV's indicators indicating that there is greater volatility, and you know, with greater volatility, usually comes less liquidity. Less people are involved in the marketplace. That's going to create lower liquidity, and that's what we're dealing with right now in the S and P's and, and in all the equities. Hey, John, what is the VIX, and what does it tell us? Well, VIX is a it's it's based off um, uh, options volatility from the SPX at the Chicago Board of, or Chicago Board Options Exchange. Um, right, it's back. It's actually back under. It's a one hundred five now. It looks like. So I'm sorry, that's the, that's the wrong thing there. Hang on a second. It's right at 16 right now, just checking it now. So it is an indicator of volatility based off options volatilities. And how but, do we use that? Like, you know, so what, what's a what's a high reading? What's considered, you know, high volatility and lower volatility? Because back when we were starting, I remember anything under 20 was considered low volatility. Anything, oh, yes. anything under 20 was considered lower volatility. So we're still trading 16, but volatility is starting to see a pickup, right? So, you know, how do we use that in terms of our trading? Well, um, a lot of folks will look at that as kind of a fear indicator. Um, okay. You know, back in uh, the... Uh, yes. The financial crisis. I mean, it was up over sixty, and yes, you know those were those were very volatile. It was just absolutely crazy. Uh, anything under twenty is considered relatively low volume, uh, low volatility. But there seems to be a bit of a disconnect right now between the the uh, volatility index and real volatility in the marketplace. If Anne Marie is in the chat right now, Anne Marie, you told me about, and I lost it somehow. Uh, the other volatility index that you've been kind of keeping an eye on. I'm not sure if you're still keeping an eye on it, but if you wouldn't mind giving me the, the ticker, if you're in the chat, she, she turned me on to this a while back. I was watching it for a while. 
somehow I lost the link. And uh, and if you're in here, Anne Marie, just let let me know if you can do that. Uh, there, yeah, that's it. UVXY, UVXY, that's the one. That's the one. So I'm going to bring this uh, that up now, and it seems to be yeah. uh, a lot closer to uh, the volatility. Um, it seems to kind of markets respond a little bit to it, and it's you know currently at seven, well, seven twenty two, seven dollars twenty two cents. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a VIX short term futures ETF. So you know it did it did get a nice pop earlier today when the numbers came out. But as far as kind of using that as a tool to look for opportunities, um, you know, if it starts getting more expensive, you're looking at greater volatility. So thank you guys for that. That's very nice. Yeah. KV, last time we spoke, as always on Wednesday, you had only taken three trades up until that point. All three were profitable. I know you were traveling over the weekend. I'd like to find out a little bit more about that in a bit, but. How many trades this week? You said you had a very profitable trade, more than you normally take out of the market. Would you mind telling us about the trade? Don't have to be specific, but uh, you know, example of your patience and how many trades have you taken up until this point for the week, I suppose? Yep, so no trading on Monday. I was still flying back to New York. Um, yeah. Obviously, no trades today because if you look at the morning session, I usually trade the morning session mainly. We do afternoon as well, but up to mm -hmm. right now, morning session, zero trades as well. So it was only that one from yesterday. If I replay this back... It was this drop right here. So it was this pullback for this next leg lower. Our entry was 1034 yesterday. We cut the move from this line to this line here. Um, and that was it. I mean, level, can, level. You, cash the whole, can yeah. you cash the whole move? Sure. But again, I'm more like level to level, either view up to level, level to view up. That's usually what I'm, I'm going um, based on. You don't have to wait for the exact levels to hit, um, however you're charting them. But um, if you're happy with the profits, you can take more trends along the way as well. That's what I usually like to do. I'm never the type of person that I, I scale in. I always scale out. Hmm. So because it, it's just my, my opinion that why would I scale in um, if, if I'm not sure when to enter? Like if I know when to enter, that's it. That's my entry. I'm entering my size that i'm comfortable with and that's it scaling in just shows me or whatever but um, that i wasn't confident on the first entry or i didn't get the first entry right if i don't get the entry right i just accept the loss and i'm out and wait for another confirmation but i like to scale out because i'm never going to be able to catch you know uh, um, the top or the you know the highest point the lowest point i'm always trying to scale along the way because there's profits that i'm securing and also managing the risk. So as the drop goes, obviously we're scaling out of those positions and just waiting for the right time. This drop, the first drop was really good. It's just mm -hmm. for me, there was a consolidation period here, right? Yep. When we already had this break, it was already rejected view up a few moments ago. So the way I saw it, I had already missed my entry point. So entering this, in my head, it was a little bit too late. Did it follow through? Yes, it did because there was huge volatility yesterday, but mm -hmm. Um, I would have liked to wait for a pullback, and that's what I did. I waited for this pullback, which happened at previous day low here. So if you go look, we'll look at Monday low, which at that time was also week low. Okay, so that's how those levels yes. are lining up. Waited for the pullback from week low. Also, you know, sellers getting a little bit exhausted there. Bounced. Yep. We saw that rejection happen, and then we went back in. And um, I know, you know, a lot of guys on Top Step TV like to look at volume profile, not as much on the volume candles. But I love the volume on the candle side because here's what we saw there, right? So we had a um, increase. Good and volume on the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then as, as soon as we had the pullback happen, we had a volume decrease, okay? Mm -hmm. And volume started increasing again on the way down. So it, it just an easy way to understand, okay, if the reversals are actually reversing. Because if we had more volume come in on these candles on the way up, this would probably have not rejected here and would have gone straight up. Okay, but because we saw the volume decrease on the way up, it just showed me some weakness on the buyer side, and it was just a breathing room pullback for another leg lower. Um, and that's what we took yesterday. And I haven't taken a uh, future straight since then, actually. Obviously, today it's just to me, people can trade this. To me, it's just it's a huge snake here. Um, uh -huh. So 
I, I don't know if I want to be in a position right now. And we've been in this range for half an hour, right? So there's no yeah. trend whatsoever either. Just bouncing between levels. We have R1 here and opening price, and we've just been bouncing in between those zones. But yeah, so just again, waiting, being patient. Um, I'm really the type of person who waits for pullbacks. I don't like to enter a trade while it's already running. If I'm not ending for waiting for those pullbacks, with futures, is it very, very tricky because you get mm -hmm. filled at the top, pulls back, you're already done. It has the pullback, but you can't hold the pullback because you got filled at the top. So you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? <laughs> so I'd rather, I'd rather wait for the pullback. I know I'm going to miss some trades because there are some trades that just go up and up and up or down and down and down, but I'd rather sure. miss those trades. I'd rather miss the trades um, that I'm not comfortable in, in being in because I'm always looking at things from a perspective of risk. So I always think, okay, how much can I lose on this one? Like, where can I get stopped here? A lot of people focus on the upside, how much they can win, but I'm always yep. feeling, okay, what could go wrong here? Um, I, f funny enough, I was talking with, with a, uh, one of our traders yesterday, uh, and he was like, whenever you're on, on, the, on the trading calls, you're like, okay, but this could do this and we can get stopped here. And you're like, and it's like, it creates a panic. I'm not mm. doing that to create a panic, but I'm always thinking what could go wrong because that's what I want to prepare myself for. If it right. goes in my direction, so be it. I have my target set, you know, I'm going to get a uh, profit taken and whatever, but I'm always thinking, okay, I'm in, how can this go completely wrong? Exactly. And what exactly. do we do when that happens? Exactly. First thing I, I think about. In trading, yes. In trading, if it goes to your pro uh, target pro uh, profit target, it was supposed to do that. So, you know, we'd yeah. already planned and accounted for that. If it doesn't, if you get stopped out, that's where we're starting to think about contingencies, what went wrong. And I know it's kind of a backwards, you know, mindset, you know, kind of a negative mindset. But, I, you know, and tell me what you guys think, John. Um, you know, trading is a lot. It's very defensive. You know, um, the profits take care of themselves as long as we cover the downside. But like I said, uh, if it hits your profit target, it was, the trade was supposed to do that. Whereas if it doesn't, you know, now you got to think, what did I not see? So a lot of people come in thinking, you know, upside, 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 where in reality, it's about protecting your downside. 100%, Andre. I mean, and even if, even if there is a trade that you take that it, that is a loss, it doesn't necessarily mean it, there was a mistake made there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as long as the trade that you're taking is planned, part of your strategy, part of your process, even if it's a loss, it doesn't it doesn't make it a bad trade. The bad trades are the ones like KV is talking about, where all right, you know, I, I, I the market's moving in this direction. I just have to close my eyes and get in. And it wasn't planned. There's no basis as to where your risk is going to be on that. The, you know, those are the ones that that even if it's a winning trade, is, is probably more damaging to a trader than if you have a planned trade that is a loss. You know, there's a there's the thing called the hier hierarchy of decision making. Mm. This was Dr. Menneker that uh, that turned me on to this, and it's. Let me see if I can find it here. Okay. In I the think meantime, I KV, it out, but KV, but it's uh, K, Yeah, sorry. Go on, John. I'm sorry, Andre. Um, so there's four different trades you can take. The, the best trade is a trade that's in plan and is a winner. Right. Mm -hmm. The second trade is a trade that's in plan and is a loser. Neither yeah. of those do much damage to you, right? Of course, mm -hmm. we're always using mental capital no matter what we're doing in this. The, the, the number three and the number four are the damaging ones. The number three is a trade that you take out of your plan, out of your strategy, and out of your process, and it's a loser. The worst right. trade that you can take, the most damaging trade to a <laughs> trader, is the trade number four that you yep. take out of plan, out of strategy, right. out of process, and is a winner. Because the next time you're in that situation, you're going to remember, hey, the last time I did this, I did, last time I was in this situation, I did this, and it worked out for me. And so that's what you're probably going to do, because you're already kind of setting those neural pathways towards that way. And 99 times out of 100, that's not going to be the right thing to do. It's going to create losses and it's going to create yep. more damage. So, yeah, I think, you know, I they're... Think, Go ahead. Same, same, same concept as what you just said there, Hope, right? I've heard also like a good trader has big wins, small wins, and small losses, but <laughs> never big losses, okay? So um, like as long as you can eliminate the big losses, you're good. 
small losses are fine. Everyone's going to have small losses. Small mm -hmm. wins are fine. Big wins are fine as well. Just eliminate the big losses and you're good to go. A lot of people hold on to hope so much. It's on the, um, the, the, the hope that a lot of people lose on, on, on this game because they think, okay, you know, maybe you're looking at levels and you're like, okay, it's going to hold this level, but maybe it holds this level. And then you're holding until next thing you know, the position is over. So I, I think I talked about this you know, a week or two ago here as well, but always keep in mind, guys, before you open that position, just like we were talking about, you know, what, what could go wrong there, always ask yourself as well, where does this trade become invalid? That's yes. the question you ask yourself. Yes. And if you cannot answer that question before you get in a trade, do not open that trade because you don't have a plan to begin with. Absolutely. Maybe what would some of the answers be to that question? Wired. Yeah, what would make a trade invalid? Give you some answers or some things to look for uh, that otherwise people wouldn't know. What would make a trade invalid? It, it's based on everyone's uh, trading strategy, right? So if you're basing it off of levels, right, it could be below a key level. If you're basing yeah. it off of candlesticks, maybe below a, a previous candle low. Um, if you're basing it off, I don't know, view up, it might be a close above view up, right? So it's going to depend on the system that you're using. If you're using moving averages, maybe, right? So it's okay. going to depend on that. But it, it's, it's an area, right? It's an area that, you know, if, if it breaks above this or if it breaks below this area, I should mm -hmm. be out of this position or I'm not following the plan. And I recommend all of my traders write it down somewhere or put it on the chart because more than likely, if you don't do one or the other, you will forget about that once the trade is open. Mm. Because you, you oh. go blank. Once the trade is open, you really forget what the hell you were thinking about before the trade is <laughs> open. John, what's your quote? Yeah, all, all, all you're thinking about is how much money am I up or down? That's all it is on, on your mind. So place it either on a, on a note, write it down on, on, a, on a note you have there, or put it on your chart so it's there that you can see even when the trade is, is evolving. We don't get any smarter once we put the trade on. No, definitely right. not. You, you just, you know, <laughs> it's so true, it's, man. It's so true. It's downhill, we get dumber. It's, down, it's downhill from 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 when it comes to the so true. That's just how it is. It's, it is. Uh, I, I, it is. I, I make I make the the joke as well. Um, you're sober before the trade opens. You're drunk once the trade opens. So, <laughs> and then you're hungover if it's a loser, and you're getting even. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's downhill. Yeah. It's a domino effect, right? It's and it's it never is. stopping. Next thing you know, you've done four resets on a day, and you you get the top stem email, email that you're doing too many resets. Yeah, it's very true. And uh, it's a you know it's what was I what was I going to say? Oh, back to you know where where does a trade become invalid? Well, right. a trade becomes invalid when te when price takes it technically to a level that says, okay, that's not going to work, and and you know sometimes. It'll take it to there anyway. It'll, it'll, you know, one tick and take you out of the trade. But that also gives you gives you information. What I what what bothers me, and I don't know how you feel about this, uh, KV, is when I hear traders saying, you know, uh, every trade I take, I risk, you know, ten points, or every trade I take, I risk five points because that's all I'm comfortable taking, and they're not taking into effect where a price has to advertise. To yep. prove the trade wrong they're just taking a static risk on every trade they take and sometimes that's not gonna not gonna be the best uh the the best road to take what do you think kv 100 percent, right and that's why i created the table as well just because um the market doesn't care how much you want the stop loss to be you know mm -hmm. if, if all you want is five points then how does that affect the price action right the, the market doesn't go your way so um mm -hmm. use any tool you can guys either price action either you know uh, um, risk formulas that you have on a table as well to understand how much your risk should be and adjust right we talked about adjusting adjust your position sizing to yep. that because you cannot take a position with a five point stop loss and five point not being enough to let the trade breathe for for it not to work out because the chart is a chart. You have to look at the chart first and be like, okay, how much could this pull back? And the right. trade idea yeah. is still valid. And that could be 20 points sometimes. Can you hold 20 points? Oh, oh no, I, it's too much. Then size down or don't get right. in. Wait for, for a better mm -hmm. entry point. That's the whole point of trading. It's not you know, letting the market know that you want a five point stop loss. And a better, better entry might be based off of where that point of invalidation is. 
good call. Yes. If you look at it that way, look at where your loss is going to be, where's the best trade location I can get for it and demand it, you're going to limit risk a lot that way. Yep. Um, a lot of people like to take, you know, uh, um, trades close to those invalid invalidation zones, right? Because the risk is so tight. You might get mm -hmm. stopped out more often, but the risk is so tight. Um, this is very easy to understand for the people that take reversal trades, right? Because mm -hmm. when you take reversal trades, the point of invalidation is, is again, the previous low or the previous high. So it's, it's right. much easier to, to understand, right? Uh, if you're taking something in between price action, it's a little bit different because you have to understand, okay, where is the next demand zone? Where is the next um, resistance zone and so on? Well, foes, we did just make new highs in crude here, trading $86.38 quietly. Didn't uh, exactly run through it, but we did uh, uptick new highs here. Trading up against the highs now on the heels of that news out of the Middle East. Uh, some uh, missile attacks imminent, as you know. Oil is highly sensitive to headlines coming out of the Middle East. So we did just make new highs quietly, not very aggressively, I would say. Um, taking a look at the other markets. NASDAQ just kind of chopping around just beneath VWAP right here. S&Ps as well. Dow not doing a whole hell of a lot as well. Pretty quiet. Besides oil, just continue to uptick quietly, I would say. Trading $86.38 in the session with uh, Tuckman. Uh, we talked about, you know, at what point do it does... These commodity prices bleed into inflation, therefore bleed into equities. KV, what are your thoughts on that? Are we getting to a point where as, uh, commodity prices are getting so high or starting to tick up that we're going to see it start bleeding into inflation and then therefore into you know, equities? Probably, probably. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a, a little bit longer until we get, um, especially on the energy sector, you know, XOM, um, CDX, mm -hmm. Oxy. Uh, when we get the energy companies, earnings earnings are a little bit late, but um, it, they've been on a crazy run. I was looking at um, Exxon Mobil a mm -hmm. few months ago, mm -hmm. really nice zone, and it went through, moved to the upside really good. I was like, okay, that might be it. You know, it might be time for a pullback. Not the case. You know, it, it just kept on moving and moving and moving to the upside, where um, it doesn't look like it's stopping. Right? We just had a new high of day on on oil as well, even. As soon as this session started at 2 p.m., um, and it's still continuing, right? So yep. it might bleed in into that as well. I'm not sure um, about the political space as well, just because not sure like what the administration will do since it's an election year, right? So are they going to do anything to bring oil prices down before uh, you know September November period, or or what's going to happen for that? I'm not too sure about. I'm not as 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 you know informed of the political space but i think there's going to be some some nuances to that as well when we're going to take those uh, kind of external factors more into consideration a little bit after the summer period as well i don't know what they're going to do uh to bring crude prices down they already drained the strategic petroleum reserve Maybe maybe yeah. Biden has, has some oil on his backyard or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tap into it. Uh, that, that could well, be our, gonna, only, our only safe. They were going to uh, they were going to uh, replenish it down around seventy dollars, but they never did. So, well, we are maybe seeing speaking of seventies, we are seeing a tilt here: seventy four percent in the Nasdaq, sixty one percent, sixty nine percent in the ES. All. Tilted to the long side, uh, a little bit too. So we aren't really seeing that much now. move. And uh, hey, John, what's the uh, what's the Delta update? If you don't mind, here at one forty three Central. No uh, yes, in Nasdaq. That's a B, yes. negative seventeen thousand. Oh, okay. I can uh, NQ. NQ negative five thousand. Okay. And Dow yeah. minus two thousand. Okay. All right. We might have some maybe later. We'll keep an eye on it. You just think what I'm thinking. So uh, we'll <laughs> tune in for Power Hour. But uh, currently, we are seeing 74% 70, long in the NASDAQ, 69% long in the ES. Everything else is pretty much around 50 50. So we might have a little bit of a squeeze coming up for Power Hour. But for the time being, we're going to watch these markets trade sideways. Oil, oil did pull back about man, 17 cents off the highs, now trading $86.21. So if you do believe the trend is going to continue the upside, maybe you get long here. Just a thought. Going to need confirmation with that. 
Uh, KV, so moving forward, we got PPI. Uh, how hot of a reading do we need for us to really send, you know, you said that equities aren't paying so much attention to inflation anymore. And the markets, you know, say that you that is correct, even though it seems to be the focus on the headlines and the news and that earnings, we now turn our attention to earnings. Um, you know, with higher interest rates, I did take a look at the 10-year here and 10-year yield is now 4.55%. So we are seeing a nice rise in yields there. And uh, yields have been high. That should help the financial sector coming in for earnings, right? PPI tomorrow. So what we have okay. here on the expectations, um, okay. 0.2% core PPI expected. I mean, okay. today the differences were only a 0.1 difference, right? So in terms right. of CPI, core CPI, only a 0.1 difference. If we get anything higher than a 0.1 difference, we might get some bigger swings. Um, so yeah, if, if anyone is trading pre-market tomorrow, just careful. Um, I see a lot of people post on, on the top step Discord, on the top step Facebook page, what the hell happened? Like, don't don't let these events catch you off guard because they're right. they're public. It's not even private information. So just mm -hmm. look up, you know, economic calendar, either on market watch, either on investing.com or somewhere and just put a calendar. Financial right? don't, juice. Don't, yeah, top of X has them too. Yep. And there just, it is. It, it, it's right there. You don't even have to search for it. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So it's, yeah. don't like the, the markets are difficult as they are. Don't make the, the, the job harder on yourself on, on losing on events that you should be staying cash unless you're gambling. Well, that's a different story, you know, but, um, <laughs> you should be staying cash during those events because no one knows. Even if you know the number, you don't know the reaction. There's times mm -hmm. that good news is good news. There's times that bad news is good news as well. So yep. it's, it's the old buy the rumors, sell the news effect. Yeah. Yes, it is. There's no excuse, no excuse to being caught, um, not paying attention and caught um, off guard by, you know, numbers and headlines and speakers. Uh, it's all there at your fingertips and it is free. It's not private information by any means. Um, I, uh, I I think I, I've read somewhere that um, actually the CPI numbers were leaked to JP Morgan uh, before the event today. Oh, was this yesterday? Was this yesterday or this morning? Yeah, uh, I read the news today this morning that you know the numbers from CPI were leaked before the the news this morning. So there certainly um, was suspicious trading activity yesterday. I will uh, say that mm -hmm. on the close. So, but, uh, unfortunately, yeah. those are not leaked to us. So let's let's continue doing <laughs> what we're doing. You know. I would yeah, agree with that. <laughs> so we still got 71% long here in the NASDAQ, and we aren't catching much of a bed trading right just above VWAP. I got my VWAP at 18,176. We're about two points higher than that. Mm -hmm. See, that could be the top end of this range looking at the five minutes, but certainly no conviction one way or another. Uh, but yeah, 71% long in the NQ, 68% long in ES. Besides that, everything's just hovering around 50-50. As we close in on the power hour, the final hour of the trade, day before mm -hmm. PPI, and then Friday we got the earnings season kicking off with financials. So it should be uh, maybe see pick up, hopefully in liquidity, John, because this ES is market state has changed. Uh, last week we were seeing you know two hundred up on the bids and offers. Now it's look forty up, forty you know forty on the we bid, forty on the ask. So we talked about it. It's changed. We did. Uh, so Andre, this is, might be something you might kind of think about if we're going to see a squeeze later on. Uh, we got a little bit of coiling going on here. This is the mm -hmm. five minute chart, but you know, there's one, two, three, two points, three points of contact on this one, one, two, three, four points of contact on this upper one. Okay. A breakout above this for a, for a, a short squeeze to the upside might be something you might be able to use during, uh, during power hour. I'll be mm -hmm. there with you in, in yep. spirit and in chat. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe the move is, is para, right? We had we had a strong move actually, you know, last forty five minutes of the day yesterday. So um could we get the same one before PBI tomorrow? Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. It's just been today it's been very, very sideways. There's days that this happens, but it goes on maybe until lunch hours. Today it's been very and it's it, it literally looks like a box today. The way yeah, he, yeah. That, I guess it looks like a perfect, perfect box. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, we've made the last high was 1038. So the first one hour, the last low was 947, the first 15 minutes almost. 
and we haven't even retested those highs or lows ever. It's just, I don't know, too, too, too crazy. And the volatility is there. Don't, don't, uh, uh, uh kind of yeah. confuse volatility with sideways price action. Just because it's sideways doesn't mean it's slow because right. the movements are pretty strong today. It's just tight in the range. That's all. But don't confuse, you know, sideways price action with this being slow because it is not slow. It is one of the faster volatile days we've seen in a while. Jay says thought that was that would be inside the trading. Um, Which part? Those, those, those Which part? Don't, Leaking the yeah, numbers? <laughs> those those <laughs> rules don't apply to, to JP Morgan and and the um, Nancy Pelosi's. You know. No, there's a. Yeah, it does not. We'll just leave it at that. But yes, violently range bound cool. <laughs> yes, violently range bound as a Dolbyism. That's exactly what KV is describing there. Just because mm -hmm. the range bound doesn't mean there's not. Uh, it's thin, right? It's thin. So therefore, you're going to you are going to see some volatility, but uh, it does make it a bit trickier. And inevitably, you are going to take heat on these trades. So you need to adjust yeah, your yeah. risk parameters accordingly with that um, volatility. All right, Nasdaq catching a bit of a bit. We are above VWAP right now, trading eighteen one eight five. Um, mm -hmm. That is with um, tilt, tilt to seventy two percent long in the NQ. So delta negative seventy, people. not delta negative forty nine hundred in, in the in the Nasdaq. 100. And ES, John, it was just seventeen. Negative, negative seventeen four. Thank you. Okay, so it grew as we do see uptick here. We do have about six minutes left here. And patience with KV. KV, okay, real quick, you did go to New York. Tell us about the trip. People are asking about it. Did you feel the earthquake, the famous New York earthquake? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we were talking about this on the green room as well. But um, earthquake was happening as soon as I was checking in into the airport. So mm -hmm. just think of the environment, guys, of the – I mean, if you're in the uh, the tri-state area, you got those alarms on your iPhones, yeah, the emergency state alarms, right? Imagine mm -hmm. being in an airport and not happening. Oh, hundreds hundreds and hundreds of those alarms going on off at the same time it was just crazy i didn't feel Were it people though, freaking out everyone was, was on their phones do you see this are you probably calling their 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 families or something because it's sure it's not something that happens you know um i think the last one that happened in new jersey was like years and years and years ago it's not something that we get here on, no, on right? the new, york, new york new jersey area it's it, it, it was feeling like one of those AI fake news, you know, that it's like just made up news. But um, we did not feel it actually at the airport. Not sure why, but we fake did news. I never heard of fake news. <laughs> AV, after you got AV, after you got those alerts, not to make light of this because obviously it's very serious. How soon thereafter did you check the markets to see if the markets reacted to, uh, yeah, information like that hitting New York? I was trained in. Uh, in the early 2000s where, you know, it's terrorism and, you know, things like that. Any headline would move the markets and we were, you know, start checking the markets. Did you check the markets after you realized what had happened? Uh, not really. I was locked in on my vacation time. So well um, <laughs> I, well I did done. not check the markets. And I, was, I was locked in. I was just ready to fly. I was like, hopefully this flight does not get delayed because I do not need that. Uh, don't. Because I'm sure the U.S. will pay $150 for it. I mean, they, they are, I, was, I was seeing some funny TikToks. Um, these are the consequences or, or like the effects, the aftermath of the um, New Jersey earthquake. And it was just funny because they were showing pictures of like uh, water spills on the desk or like cereal on, on the floor. Nothing major, mm -hmm. right? It was just because right. nothing happened. It wasn't like a major earthquake with, with you know, incidents. It made Luckily, me spill my coffee. Yeah, you know, uh, the, exactly. pillow fell, the, the pillow fell on the floor, you know. It, <laughs> it was just one of those uh, um, parody TikTok videos. Wow, we bounced right off of VWAP there, George. Uh, nice taking profit there, but yes, we bounced right off VWAP. Took a bit turn to the downside here. We are in a range, so if you did take the short up against VWAP, well, good on you. We are trading beneath 5,200. In the uh, ES, chop around 5200, I should say, should set up for a very nice power hour. We do have a negative delta in the ES going into the power hour. So we will see if a trade does present itself. KV, we talked about PPI, we talked about earnings. We got about two minutes left in patience with KV. As always, thank you so much for joining us. The people find it very valuable your time, your information, your, uh, your knowledge that you do pass along. 
Uh, anything we should look forward to into this power hour or the next one? Will you be trading PPI tomorrow? Um, the after effect, yes. Um, okay. Not not the gamble play at at at, at the announcement, but um, power hour. Just please, guys, watch the tilt because um, Andre was talking a lot about the tilt on the move up. How much was the tilt at these highs? Close it was to like 80%, seventy something, seventy percent. Good call on the long. Yeah. So. Make yep. sure you're watching that tilt. You can use Great it any call, way man. you wish, but make sure you're watching it because um, this is a, a very nasty draft. From the high of this, from 184 to the bottom, that's over a 30-point move in 60 seconds, yep. and maybe it's not even over yet. So please make sure you're watching the tilt if you're on top of X, and you are good to go for power hour. Man, good stuff. All right, Johnny, you're going to be with us in the chat giving us updates on the Delta. Yep. You got uh, it. Very valuable stuff today. Uh, anything we should be looking forward to or into going into power hour? We are selling off right now, John. Take us out, close us out, and uh, we'll see you guys in power hour. Well, I mean, you know, we do have some some pretty negative delta in the S and Ps. I'm not that concerned about it in the Dow or in the Nasdaq, but yeah. you know, if this thing can, it continues to grow legs, I mean, we could see delta negative thirty thousand by the end of the day if this thing continues this push to the downside. Right now, it's up near negative twenty thousand, Andre. So, but if we can't take out the lows. If we can't see the directional activity below, that's when this the potential squeeze comes in because you know, and KV, I mean, we all know that day traders don't want to be holding positions tomorrow morning at 7.30, right? Right? Uh, again, right? Unless, 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 unless you're, you're feeling the Las Vegas spirit, then no. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, KV. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Andre. You Have a good time in power hour. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yep, good luck. See you guys in power.